This episode of Blacktop Banter is brought to you by Craftco, the world's leading manufacturer of packaged pavement preservation materials and equipment for the asphalt industry. Learn more at craftco.com. All right, man. It's like crazy, smoky, hazy, hot here in Wisconsin. We're getting like Canada wildfire smoke. I got like bronchitis, summer bronchitis, I think, from a bit. Uh, Chris has been playing soccer outside. He's coughing and dying from it too as well. I got bronchitis. He's got bronchitis and no one has time for that. Um, but we've been putting down a lot of fluids lately and uh, in need. So if you hear me cough or clear my throat or whatever, that's what it is. It's crazy. If you're in the Midwest right now, you know what we're talking about. But what that does is makes me spend a lot of time inside when I can. The guys, we were out working yesterday doing asphalt work. And um, when I'm inside, most of the time, I try not to mess with my phone, but I pretty much live on my phone and run the podcast off my phone. So I go to my Facebook feeds and whatnot. One dude that has been on my Facebook feed now for a year or so, and we have a connection with through a mutual friend, is Eric Rogers. Eric and I got kind of connected through Kyle Lachone, who you guys know is now part of Black Top Banter's creator team. And, like, no lie, my eyes will be barely cracked open. I'm at the coffee pot, like, getting ready to pour this thing. And I see a piece of content that is like, hey, you, let me tell you something. And, like, immediately I'm like, oh, shoot, he means me. Uh, Every time it gets my attention, you do really, really well with that. But... I want to let you introduce yourself, Eric, and uh, give the followers and listeners a chance to get to know you in your own words. So let us know who you are, my friend. Yeah, man, I appreciate you um, having me on as a guest and giving value to your audience. Uh, This is something I love doing. My name is Eric Rogers. I'm the owner and operator of The Immortal Man. It's a all men's faith-based leadership development program. And man, my life has been quite a... uh, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but now I can say it's a blessing and I get to wake up every day teaching the things that I wish I knew the most in life. And, um, you know, to kind of give you a little bit of background on and how I could connect with you guys, even though I'm a coach and a motivator is that I was in the construction field myself for over 10 years, you know, started as a laborer. I uh, started and then I went into uh, installing fireplaces and eventually became an electrician, made my way up to foreman and, and the commercial field. And so I've worked side by side with asphalt layers in, in all sorts of construction workers. And I could say it's hard work and it takes massive character to do the things that you guys do every day. And, you know, if there's anything that I could say is thank you because we need more guys like you out there working and you're a special type of person. And uh, I just want to, I just want to say thank you to you guys because our, our roads are laid because of guys like you, our buildings (laughs) are built, our lights are on and people forget the value in you guys. So thank you. No, appreciate it, man. We, we hear that fairly often, uh, you know, not as much as we would like to, but we hear it often enough, and usually it's somebody who has an appreciation for asphalt or for construction or whatever, and that's mainly because they're coming in contact with it, like, first and foremost. We have a really good uh, friend of ours, Ryan Farmer, who is the um, World Street Lose Champion last year, who we sponsor here at Blacktop Banner. And every time, like, we talk about, like, we'll post a Facebook post, and then you'll see like 20 or 30 contractors mention on it or post pictures about work that they've done recently, whether it was on a road or whatever. And Ryan's always like, you you guys are doing the Lord's work, boys, because, you know, they're laying close to it on the street, running on these uh, street luges downhill and whatnot. And he's like, you boys are doing the Lord's work, saving us. And uh, yeah, man, it's a, it, I always tell people asphalt is a large connector, right? And they're like, well, yeah, it connects us where we're going it's like no like you don't understand it connects way beyond just the road and just the blacktop but you know um some of the things i really enjoy looking at your posts besides like seeing the construction vests on and be like okay we're cut from the same cloth all right i i can i can relate to this is your story man um i've been fortunate enough to read through your posts which you do a great job writing those posts and um us doing some writing for different magazines and whatnot and doing our own posts, writing the content, it's not as easy as people think to come up with content all the time, right? Especially relatable right. content. 
But um, going back to your story, um, dude, you come from our industry. You come from the construction industry. Uh, it's riddled with hard times. Right. And it's riddled with if yeah. you're going to make some kind of a living, you got to spend a lot of time away. You got to spend a time and attention in your craft and on your project. And that takes time away from other places. And we cope with it in a lot of different ways in different places. And, uh, you know, you, you've made no mystery about hiding um, your past and the hard times and whatnot and um, how you come through some of that. Can you share a little bit of that with us? Is that all right for me to ask you to do that? Of course. Of course, man, that's usually, you know, where we start here. And I believe that we all have a story and it should be told because there's a lot of people that can connect to the scenarios and situations that you have been through. And the one problem that men tend to have or a belief system is that we, we believe our, our problems are unique, right? Because we're, we were raised, especially if you're in the construction trade, I guarantee you, you were raised to not show certain parts of your life, not talk about the past. And, and I agree with that to a certain extent, but when it comes to teaching, guiding and helping others, we can really make an impact on people through our story and what we've overcome. And so my goal in life, my first purpose in life was to become who I always needed in my darkest times. And man, I, I had, um, I didn't have a father there to um, be there for me. I didn't, I wasn't shown love. And a lot of you guys can probably relate to that. Mm -hmm. And I just decided instead of sitting there and complaining about it and being a victim about it, I was just going to become it. Right. right. And, and what's cool about that is what comes back to you is exactly what you always needed. Right. Support yeah. and, and love and appreciation. This is one thing men don't get. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so my my job is to give that to men and it's to connect with them and uh, make them not only not feel like they're not alone, but also, you know, hit them with some hard truths to pull their head out of their ass so mm -hmm. that they realize like hey, it's the past it's time to move forward right so my past is a series of unfortunate events starting at the age of seven age of seven i you know i grew up in a in a in a family that didn't have a lot of problems from the outside looking in we looked pretty good per you know that uh, republican conservative christian family right father yeah. was a prison guard Folsom prison guard uh, which is where like most of my discipline comes from. Mother sure. was a hairdresser. You know, we went to church every Sunday. Um, but if you go ask my brother and sister how their childhood was, they'd say it was perfect. If you ask me, it's a completely different story. It's because the perspectives were shifted at the age of seven when at my church, I was sexually molested by my Sunday school teacher. Oh, now, dude. this is something that, it you know, it, it happens to a lot of kids, unfortunately. And it's never really brought up. And yep. what happened to me is it changed everything. It changed my behavior, it changed my beliefs, it changed my perspective on authority, especially, which in return is a huge reason why I am who I am. And I'm a leader and I'm a leadership development coach. So I'm, I'm trying to make that change that I wish I saw as a kid. Now, what happened was after I was molested, I repressed that memory so much. Um, and the reason why is because the next week I knew I had to go back and I, I didn't want to tell my parents. I was afraid they wouldn't believe me. And so what I did is I poured bleach in her coffee instead and I tried yeah, to kill her. Bro. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And so she got super sick. She went to the hospital and I thought she was going to die. And so I just kept my mouth shut yep. for my whole life up until about uh, almost two years ago. And you know, when you repress a memory or you, you push something down, which guys are very good at that, by the way, of yep. compartmentalizing and pushing things down and saying it's, it, it is what it is, right? Which there's a, there's a blessing to that, but there's also a, a curse. And the curse is that uh, it changes your perspective and your beliefs. And so uh, my dad being a disciplinarian, a Folsom prison guard, he didn't take well to my new perspective on leadership, if mm -hmm. you can say. No, right. Sure. And so he, he did what a father should do and, and corrected and disciplined me for being a uh, smart ass or being, um, you know, uh, disobedient and things like that. So what happened, though, in my head was I'm being punished for being punished. I didn't see it the way my dad saw it. I just saw it as like, I'm not supported. No one loves me. Blah, blah, blah. And what happened is it carried on through my whole entire life. Right. So the first part was not my fault. Right. Right. And, and that's usually how it works. Like things happen to you as a person. It's life. Humans can be very evil and 
it's not necessarily your fault, but there is a certain point in your life where it becomes your fault and you got to take ownership of it and you got to fix it. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. And it's the only way to escape a victim mindset. It's the only way to escape in the, the matrix and get to a place where you're back in power of your own life. Yeah. Right. But throughout my life, that behavior, it just caused more and more and more and more trauma. Right. Uh, to the point where I started doing drugs at the age of eight years old. I, I found Damn, my mom's yeah. pills, her her Norcos, her pain pills, and I didn't really know what it was, but I took it. And I swear this is the devil. And all my pain disappeared. All my worries yep. went away. I, I was able to act normal. I was funny. I can socialize with people. My anxiety was gone. And I just kept taking it. And when those ran out, you know, and I, um, I you know, replaced them with whatever I could. So I, I wasn't time. getting caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started drinking Robitussin every day, started yeah. taking Benadryl. I, whatever I took, my use, my drug use was um, intended to take away pain, right? And that's where right. things get dangerous, right? When you, when you cope with pleasure to take away pain, the pain just gets worse, right? Yeah. I'm a big believer in, in, in having fun and enjoying your life, like having a drink every once in a while or, you know, having a, an occasional fun night. But when you're yep. doing it to repress pain is when we start to cause a problem. Bingo. Um, I became an addict at eight years old immediately. That's when we, that's really what addicts that's crazy, man. are doing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I used for 21 years wow, in my life. Dude. 21 years. And 21 years. And wow, if you do dude. the math, that would say that, hey, I just recovered this year. It's true. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying this honestly, five years ago, I changed my life entirely, although I didn't do th certain things right, mm -hmm. and I, I tried to do a lot of things on my own, mm -hmm. and I had small relapses throughout the years. Sure. I didn't become fully recovered through um, a 12-step program until this year, and that's Thank when really man. things changed, and I invited God in. Thank you, man. It's yeah, man. It's big, a big deal, big dude. Change. It's a huge deal. It's a you know what you're speaking about yeah. is it's a big deal in our industry. It's been a to me is an epidemic and has been whether it's um, the guys that live life on the road or whether the guys that don't right and they're just constantly right. working twelve hours, sixteen hours a day. I mean, like you said, there's all there's something that isn't your fault first, right? That then all of a sudden you're just repressing pain versus figuring out a way to overcome it and become who you need to do it. But let's keep Absolutely. going with it a little bit further, man, because if it just happened, you know, there's guys that are out there that have been doing it as long, if not longer, and, uh, you know, can't figure And they, like you said, in our industry, you know, you're trying to do this, boy, you're trying to, you know, make it be like, yep, oh, yeah. I can do it. I can do anything. I can put it away. We'll do whatever. And the truth is, you don't really right like it there has to yeah. be a system whether it's a support system of other people or a program or whatever yeah man we are strong motherfuckers there's no doubt about that mm -hmm. um and i guarantee you everyone listening to this podcast has that strength but there's a there's a certain point where you know we have to realize that our problems are not unique we need to talk to somebody and most of the mm -hmm. time the best person to talk to is your brothers right Right. And that's the thing that we don't, we don't have. And that's something that I've created. Um, mm -hmm. But the other part is, is, you know, obviously I'm, I'm an addict. I'm, I'm going through life. I'm getting in fights. I, you know, my, my family was violent, bro. Dad was a Folsom prison guard. He grew up on the streets. Sure. His parents both killed himself themselves when, by the time he's 13, mm -hmm. he did the best he could with me. I got no resentment for him, but man, he taught me how to fight. And he also talk, taught me how to get knocked out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Older brother. We were a violent household. And sure. I used to, I was a small guy. And yeah. I never won a fight within my family. So I used to take it to school, take it back out. I was I was that guy. I was like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to control people, trying to intimidate people, being a punk. And mm -hmm. I, I got into a series of fights. And, and what happened was, um, the age of 17, basically, my dad caught me with cocaine. I, I had a cocaine habit, um, a pretty, pretty heavy one. And him being a cop, he said, get out of my house, right? So 17 years old, I got kicked to the curb. Um, I had a job at Round Table. I had a car and I had the clothes on my back and that's it. So what I did is I went to a friend's house or a, a friend of my brother's house and I slept on his couch and I told him about my addiction. I said, I got to quit. Look what it's doing to my life. You know, and, you know, the next morning he pulls out a white baggie. He's like, you want a bump? 
and of course, bro, I'm like, yeah, you know, no yeah. coffee. Let's do this. Right. And so, you know, I take a bump, it burnt like crazy, you know, and a couple minutes later, he's like, so how long have you been doing methamphetamines? Oh, and I'm like, shoot, wait, bro. what? Right. Dude, this, the devil's tricky, bro. Yeah. He's tricky. He'll get you. He'll get you. And so, um, I got pissed. I, I left. I came that night and started smoking it. I came back that night and started Damn, smoking. Really? I was hooked. Boom. I just spent about two years, um, excessively using methamphetamines um to the point where i was about i was ingesting about an eight ball a day to myself um i didn't have a job i lost my job eventually i wasn't sleeping i, I lost a ton of weight homeless at this point you know I, all i had was my car and i started getting affiliated with certain crews out in sacramento that had these drugs on hand and I had to stay high. And not to mention this is I have this identity issue where I don't have a family. I don't have anyone that yep. loves, accepts, or or understands me. And so guess who does? Criminals, right? Yep, the boys. Um, yep. Yeah, you go you go meet the white boys and they're tatted mm -hmm. head to toe with Swazis on them all you know, all over them. And, you know, to be blunt, the Aryan Brotherhood. Um, I wasn't affiliated with them, but I was a runner for them. And, uh, man, they welcomed me right away. I, I felt course. loved. They gave me what I needed. Yep. They gave me my drugs. It filled that hole in my soul. And um, mm -hmm. I got even worse and worse. But the thing about it now is that now I'm watching some of the most evil things I've ever seen on this planet. Right? Yeah. Now I'm witnessing things that no, no person should ever witness. Um, and I'm not going to get into detail of what those things are for the sake of, you know, my safety and my family. But... I've, I've seen things that number one, no one on the other side made it out to, yep. to, to tell the story. The other part is, is like, I got in situations where by the grace of God, I escaped and got, and I'm alive. Um, yeah. 18, almost 19 years old. I go to Sac County for uh man, you know, distribution of methamphetamine, cocaine. I had a bunch of weed on me. I got caught bro. And I owed a lot of people money and I I'm in jail and, um, you know, I'm about 120 pounds and scared for my life. And, it, oh, but it was sure. the first time in my life I had been sober since eight years old because I was in a Damn. cell with no drugs straight up. Did you, and, what, in that what moment, happens when, when that goes down, Eric, like what, what so happens when like, you get sober after all that time? What does your mind do? Does your mind get clear and be like hey man what the hell are you doing or what what happens it took I mean, a minute what does that feel like oh man so you've been i think that was like 10 years at that point 11 years on drugs at that point and and don't get me wrong i was never like stuck on one drug for more than three years you know i was always back and forth on certain drugs so i didn't necessarily have massive withdrawals i i slept for a few days straight and basically, yep. by the time I woke up, I was I was feeding sugar so bad. I was I ate my toothpaste full. Yep. <laughs> Just Damn. tweaking, bro. Right. Yeah. And I didn't. I at this point, before I went to jail, I was having uh, schizophrenic um, uh, episodes. I was having uh, drug induced psychosis where I wouldn't sleep or eat for a couple weeks. I was oh, seeing boy. demons. I was that guy on the side of the road yelling at cars that you see when you oh, drive boy. by. Right. I was that yep. guy. I used to try to chip out white rocks out of the asphalt that you guys lay and smoke Thank them because I thought it yeah. I thought it was meth, bro. I was nuts. Damn. I was absolutely nuts. I was That's gone. Crazy, bro. And jail saved my life, bro. Mm. Um when I got out I had you know, I had to pay up some people. I had to prove mm -hmm. I wasn't a rat and I did that. But after that I was out, bro. I mm -hmm. moved up to Tahoe and I lived in the woods for four months without a phone, with just enough food and a tent to detox and i did it Damn. and i left i that was after trial i won my trial by the way Damn. grace of god bro if you look at my life there's so many yeah, situations dude, good, that i was gonna say there's a big meaning coming down this life pipeline like all these yeah. little strings right where it's like oh okay this 100%. worked out oh that worked out for sure yeah and here i am just testing my limits right like <laughs> yeah. i got nine lives you know what i mean i'm pretty sure i only got one left dude. <laughs> yeah but what's crazy is like this is at two years old i i survived cancer and zero percent percent chance of living i have a purpose bro yeah dude i didn't realize it till lately right and so what what happened is you know i got married i had a kid um i was sober but i was still kind of dabbling and you know sober 
um, really yeah. hiding that side of me. But I, dude, I, I had just added 11 years to, of pain past that molestation yeah. to my life. Yep. I, some crazy stuff on my plate, bro. And I just meet this like great, innocent, loyal, perfect woman that has never seen things in her life. And I'm like, Ooh, this, I felt loved. That was the coolest yeah. thing ever is cool. the connection. We got married. We had a kid. My son's one year old, one years yeah. old, and I'm slipping back into my past. Mm. Right. And I go back into it. And one day I wake up and I, I look up and my wife's got all her bags packed. My son's in the car and she says, we're leaving. I never want to see you again. You're never allowed oh. to see your son again. I had done certain things within my family yeah. because that's all I knew, bro. I, yeah. I destroyed my family. It wasn't just drug use. I did horrible things to my For family. Sure. I was, I was, you know, I went behind her back. I, I, it's it, it it hurts me to even talk about it and look thank god i'm delivered from it now and i destroyed her and one day just everything was gone and, and i'm sitting there in an empty house and i spent four months drinking myself to death and, and going back to hard drugs and four months later i'm sitting on the edge of my bed with a glock in my mouth and a bottle mm -hmm. in my hand and no one to call not a single human being to call my family they don't care my wife yeah. she don't care yeah. And I, this whole time, I'm just like, no one loves me, blah, blah, blah. I might as well kill myself. So I stick mm -hmm. that Glock in my mouth, and I'm sobbing. Bro. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to pull it. And my, my tears are coming out. I'm snotty. I'm, I'm no, no, no one, to, no one to save me, bro. Put my finger on that trigger, stop pulling, and then I have this vision. And it's not the good kind of vision. This kind of vision is one that, like you would actually expect in a story. Is yeah. I had a vision of my wife being, you know, fucked by another man. Mm -hmm. And my son calling another man dad. Um, Brutal. And that, that was enough to pull that gun out of my mouth, bro. Yeah. And I said, I was, I said, I'm going to be that motherfucker. So I spent the next six months getting my, my shit straight. I, I um, got off the drugs, alcohol. I started going to the gym twice a day. I started dialing in my nutrition. I started waking up and reading the Bible in the morning. I became extremely disciplined. I traded one addiction for the next and I went all in. It's total tunnel vision. Within six months, I absolutely changed my wife. I pick up the phone. I call my wife. I tell her, this is who I am. This is what I've been doing. Um, and I even had people to prove it. I, I lived in my buddy's basement, and I wasn't allowed to drink, bring girls there or, or do drugs. And yep. he held me accountable. I That's was going good. to church. I had a built a community watching me. Yep. And she's like, come home. She said, come home. Damn. And so, that so vision that I had. Of time. I, I want. I don't want to cut you off, but I don't want to leave that in the yeah, dark. Because my my mind, I'll I'll forget about what I wanted to ask if we keep going too far. Um, no worries. Is that what is that what you held on to for those six months? Was that vision right when you had the Glock uh, in your mouth? Was that really what was that for the six months? That was like okay, 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 okay. This is gonna be it if I don't get this straight. Because it sounds like I don't want to sound cliche, especially in our space motivational, you know, speaking, all this type of stuff, um, leadership coaching, that type of stuff. But everyone always says, find your why. But like, literally, yeah. like, you were like, okay, if I don't do this, this is going to happen. This is why I need to do this and why I got to get straight. Yeah. So absolutely. I had a, I had a, a new purpose, a new vision. And I said, I'm going to do everything it takes to get there. Now, this is, there's two things that happened though. It wasn't just, that's what I want. I'm going to go get it. It was the reality kicked in that I'm going to destroy my son mm -hmm. and my wife's going to go live this life, this horrible life, bro. Yeah. Me killing myself and her finding another shitty guy or whatever. Like, yeah, I had to save, I had to save my family, but first I had to save myself. And, and the, the second thing that happened is I realized at that moment, first time in my life, I realized that everything that's happening right now is 100% my fault. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time in my life I ever ad admitted that. Admitted and that. it's almost like God just, he just put it in my heart. He's like, it's your fault, bro. This is, yeah, yeah that's going to happen. It's your fault. And I was like, it is my fault. And I pulled that gun out of my mouth. I, I took ownership and I said, everything is my fault. I said, I was molested. That was my fault. But everything after that was me. It's all choice. Right. right? It's all choice. After it's all that, choice. Yeah. And, yeah. And here's the thing is a lot of people say like, how, like I went through so much. They don't really understand that. They they just feel like they had a, a, a bad, you know, a, a, like the wrong, the, the wrong cards were dealt to them. Right. 
And so, like, they are allowed to be like this. Yeah, I was going to say they lean on that. That's their crutch. Right. Right? Like, That's oh, well, yeah, mindset. it's justified that I fuck up all the time and that I'm – yeah, should face obliterated, missed stuff, and don't and don't give a right. fuck because this happened. To that me. was my life, right? Well, for 100%. sure, dude. For sure, I've seen, you know I've seen it. Right. Uh, you, your story uh, hits hits close, not not as crazy in depth, but um, one of my siblings, like dude, same same scenario where he just was like on shit, and y you know t w would try to quit, and you and I would fucking see him fiending, right? And I was just like, like what the. I don't know what the fuck to do. Like, you know, like, especially me. I was like, fuck, I'm not, I've never been down this road and he's doing it. And there was times where like, to, to, to for, for me, it helps to understand the psyche a little bit of it all. We had a campfire one night and my sister was over and he was over and he stopped by and brought his, his kid by and you could tell he was on something. I'm like, bro, you can't fucking do this. Like, you can't come up and be like this. Kids are around, do whatever. And he had a pocket full. I think he kept it in like a, I don't know, like an Altoids tin or something, and it was pills. Yeah, that he's sounds like, right. He's, he's like, dude, I don't want to do this. I'm done. He threw it in the fire, right? We had a campfire. Not but fucking five seconds later, whoa, whoa. He reaches into the fire, like, to get it out, right? He like, so there's a psyche, right? There's devil's advocate. Yeah. Like, fuck, I don't want to be like this, but also I fucking need this. And it was just like. 100%. Dude, it was like burn the shit out of his hand, pulled it out, threw it to the side. He, right. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I remember him looking at my sister and I and being like, I'm an addict. Like, I don't know what you guys want me to say. I'm an addict. And it was just like, yeah, it's so damn. powerful, bro. And you had to hit a, a rock bottom in order to make a decision, right? Yeah. I had I had a place to push off of. That's why I made the change. Yeah. Um, if my wife were to stay with me, I would be I'd be dead right now. If she didn't oh. leave, I'd be dead right now. Yeah, the best thing I, she ever that. did for yeah. our marriage. Is yeah. leaving, yeah. yeah it's dude. saying I'm tired. She's strong, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, and I knew that took so much courage from her. If she's listening to this, like, babe, thank you. I love you. You're my hero, <laughs> right? Yeah. But what's crazy is, man, this whole time, me that that last piece of my wife leaving and me being on the bed with a gun in my mouth and me getting better, bro. I was an electrician running thirty man crews on million square foot tilt ups. Dude, crazy. I was doing a good damn I was say, job. You were too. functioning. Like, you were functioning at a high Absolutely. level around those crews. That's what's crazy, yeah. bro. Nobody knew. Nobody yes, knew. Nuts, man. Right? And yeah. so, all those guys out there that, you know, that's the biggest thing that, that screwed me over was that everything was going fine. Why would you yeah. change anything? Right? Yeah, you're pulling it out. That's all where off. things get rocky. Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. Well, especially the consequences. Yeah, pray yeah. for consequences. Yeah. Pray for consequences. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. uh, dude, really what, you know, to, to hear your story and to hear the backstory and for us to get context, the, the crazy part is I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of people in my industry and in the construction industry, and it's not such a dissimilar story, right? The more common end of this isn't coming out of the other side of it. You know what I mean? Uh, in a positive note, most of the time. It's the other route right. or a lifetime of it, dude. I see guys right now around that I know that are they're, they're in it and can't get out of it. It's like a paradigm, dude. They're just in it and they can't escape it. There's never a, a, a catalyst. And, you know, your catalyst being your wife leaving um, gives us gives us a good backstory. What I want to do is we're going to jump to some commercials that who from people who bring us the podcast and bring this message that you're bringing to our audience here at Blacktop Banner. When we come back, I'm going to have Eric go over with us what he has learned now, helping other people through leadership coaching, um, that kind of reveals what men are missing uh, who aspire for more or who want more from their life and uh, some spots about, um, you know, why they repeatedly try to get out of it and can't and those types of things. But real quick, let's hear some words from the sponsors and then we'll pop back in. Now that spring is here, it won't be long before we're back out in the field. And a key part of being successful this year is making sure we have the products we know and trust to get the job done right each and every time. That's why we use Craftco for all of our crack and joint sealant needs. Craftco products are safe, easy to use, and consistent in their quality and performance, so we spend less time troubleshooting and more time building jobs. Plus, Craftco's industry-leading service and support team means they're ready to assist with any questions we do have along the way. So, if you're ready to ditch the hassle and the headaches this year, visit Craftco.com and give their products a try. 
I know you'll be glad you did. That's C-R-A-F-C-O dot com. Dynapack continues to make an impact in the asphalt industry, literally. Recently unveiling their electric line of rollers and plate compactors, they lead the way in innovation when it comes to compaction, including their seismic technology, which creates a better, smoother, compacted surface. We're happy to have Dynapack as a supporter of the Blacktop Aner community and encourage you to interact with them on social media. For their full product lineup, visit Dynapack.com. Dynapack, your partner on the road ahead. From their iconic hot boxes to their infrared machines, and now the KM Blacktop Banner Edition seal coating unit, KM International has established itself as one of the toughest and longest lasting equipment manufacturers in the asphalt world. KM is comprised of an experienced team that brings you all the resources you would hope to see from an asphalt equipment manufacturer. Check out KM International on all forms of social media and be sure to see all they have to offer at kminternational.com. Asphalt contractors, are you guys tired of using 10 different programs to create a nice professional looking report for your customer? Are you tired of having to drive back and forth to your job sites to capture photo updates and get measurements and quantities for change orders or even having to mark your jobs out beforehand? Are you also tired of carrying too much stuff whenever you're on site scoping jobs like a wheel, a pen paper and clipboard and a spray paint can? We were too, so we developed Spot On Site, an all-in-one mobile app that allows you to measure and mark instantly from the palm of your hand, capture photos and videos that are all time-stamped and dated, and generate instant reports that you can send to your customers and your team members for a seamless collaboration. This is going to no doubt help you win more work, reduce inefficiencies, and stand out from the competition. Check us out for your free 14-day trial, spotonsiteapp.com. Thanks, Spot On Site, for that 14-day free trial. Uh, hey, I coached that guy, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> With Hayden? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. He's, dude, he's solid dude. Solid dude. Dude's getting, like... Great guy. Listen, I've been noticing you're getting, like, mega thick. That dude's thick, too, dude. He's got, like, quads, like... Yeah, I make me a little bit jealous. Yeah, bro. Like, I do. <laughs> Those boys know how to work out yeah, over there. get you on, bro. Yeah, for, for sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, before we left for the commercial break, right, we, we had, uh, your story and, uh, although your story was, uh, in my mind, um, a little more than a lot of the stories that we hear about, right? Not too many people dabble over to Sacktown and, uh, you know, end up getting in groups with Aryans and whatnot as well. But what they do do is go through a lot of the, the things that you've went through and then have the same kind of, um, family lifestyle once they start a family right they start working a lot and run through those types of issues the thing is i i want to believe this um and i do believe it that most men aspire for more whether it's a, a better home life whether it's more for their children whether it's more for themselves whether it's just more peace right all these things the problem is we live in a society that doesn't really care about that it's how much can you produce, right? And, and, and by how right. much you produce, that explains how much you're worth. That explains how much you're right. more. And it, it's a complete lie that we live in that. But um, what are most men, because, you know, like I said, I can have a hunch, but you work directly with, with men, uh, especially, uh, you know, in, in your faith-based groups and whatnot. Uh, what are they missing, Eric, these guys who aspire for more? Or... What do they have that they don't see, I guess, is that, that type of question. But what is it for the most okay. part? I'm sure it's not cut and dry, but for the most part, what is it you think? Yeah, so I, we work with mostly blue-collar business owners, uh, whether mm -hmm. the roofing, asphalt, you know, what you name it, man. And the one thing I could say that is relevant to each and every one of those individuals is they live high-stress lifestyles, Right. Um, you guys work hard and whether you're just, you know, a worker or a business owner, there's, like you said, it's about producing. Now, one thing I, I have seen in every single married, uh, client in that mm -hmm. situation is that by the time they make it home, they got nothing to give. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you this, man, you can find fulfillment in your work, but you're never going to you're never going to be fully fulfilled until your, your wife is on the same page as you 
and you guys are growing together in a way that's strong, right? And so what we see a lot, like I'm sure your audience knows right now, the number one complaint you'll always hear from construction workers is their wife. Yeah, Am I right? How sure. many how many of you guys have gotten divorces? Mm -hmm. um, and and so there's I, the the biggest broken piece in um, in a lot of men is is the family unit itself, right? And here's the thing is your life and your success and the way you communicate with people is completely reflecting off the health of your family unit. Mm -hmm. That's where the foundation is. Then, And a lot of people don't understand that is our society is broken because the family unit is broken. Mm -hmm. And yeah, these guys are, the, these guys are waking up into something that they're pissed off about right away. Right. 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 In the day. A hundred percent. And then they got to yeah. go through their whole they're, day reacting to people in that mood all the time Boom. that's perfectly said bro because i would say the biggest thing in the working man's life that that you guys struggle with is you wake up for the things that stress you out the most yeah. right yeah. and so there is no time to reflect there's no time to to look at your life and say hey this is what's next for my family this is what's next for me and so it's immediately just go 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 and yeah. you go through day reacting rather than you know, taking action or, or observing. And, and if you're a leader at any point, look, if you're a father, you're a leader. If you're a husband, you're a leader. If you're a yeah, business owner, sure. foreman, you're a leader. You got to understand that we as men set the standard for the rest of the world and we have to take ownership in the way everything's moving. But the yeah. problem is, is that life tends to be so stressful and difficult sometimes is that we have a hard time looking outside of ourselves. And for sure, that for a man, that's dangerous for society. It's dangerous for ourselves because we cannot find fulfillment when we're looking in ourselves. We're always going to be our worst critic and we're always going to be looking at this, this flawed version of ourselves. But look, when we can look outside of ourselves and serve others, then we can create an empire. We can create a legacy. We can create fulfillment in our life. And, and one thing that's, that's lacking in most men's life is passion purpose yeah um, for sure i mean it's all about money you got these bro. guys oh for sure that's and get this that's what society has told them they should be doing so therefore if they're doing right. that and everything's falling apart it's not their fault right so yeah. what, what i've come to find and maybe you've seen this too is that it, it sounds stupid but i i say it all the time is that there's people who think on purpose and there's people who don't think on purpose where literally they just go to work. They're like, oh, my job is to dig this trench for the next quarter mile by the end of the day. Cool. That's what I'm going to fill my mind with. Their mind isn't filled right. with, why did my life, wife look at me that way? And why didn't I feel good when I came home tonight and this happened? And how come when I watched this movie and this certain scene made me feel like shit? Like they don't even do yeah. any of that. It just gets kicked to the side because they're like, well, I got to go to bed because I got to get up and sweat my ass off tomorrow, dig this trench lay this foundation so we can lay this asphalt mat because I-95 needs done. And that's what they fill their mind right. with. These guys aren't thinking on purpose. Have you seen that? Is that, am yeah. I missing the mark Absolutely. on Absolutely. It's tunnel vision. It's tunnel, tunnel vision is the opposite of leadership, right? Now, where I'm trying to think that where things get, you know, it's tricky and sticky is that I believe that most men, especially in the construction industry, are in survival mode. It's about getting through the day right it's about yep. getting through the day not not dying in certain situations yep, you know for sure most of most time we go home we give our, our family a half-assed version of ourselves and then yep. you know we're probably picking up the bottle as well or or whatever it is that you used to cope or laziness sure, right dude, all they think about is one day like my pension's gonna come in one day and it's like dude that's what, right that's what you're living for you're literally going through all these motions every day so that your pension or retirement comes through when you're totally. 63 or 65, maybe later nowadays. It's like you're going to spend the next right. 30 years of your life. That's going to be your goal is to survive 30 years so that you get a pension. Dude, there's right. no and satisfaction. You all deserve that. For sure. Right. And you, you you all deserve it. You guys work hard. You deserve the money. You deserve the, the freedom and stuff like that. But when we value ourselves or we base our worth off of what we have – the money that's in our bank then, or, or even like our wife's happiness, let's say, mm -hmm. um, you are always going to feel worthless, bro. Just a fact, yeah. right? Yeah. Because money comes and money goes. One thing that always stays is character. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's what 
we, that's what we need to focus on here in in this society is because look at our society it's falling apart and you've heard the you've heard the quote um you know good times create weak men that mm -hmm. one right yep. I, I don't know the full thing but it's like hard times create strong men strong men create good times good times create easy you know men. weak men yeah yeah whatever, and then weak right? men create hard times it's just a cycle exactly right but it doesn't have to be that's no. a that's the thing is that yeah. it doesn't have to be we just let it we let it right because you guys you guys are are focused on the bare minimum which is your pension which is mm -hmm. getting through the day Pain when bills. really like your yep. kids your kids do not give a fuck about those things your wife no. most of the time you know she cares of course about money and stuff and getting the bills paid on time but like you know time spent is way more valuable to a woman than anything and and for what you 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 know we die we die yeah we all die yeah. right yeah it's inevitable so what's next yeah and this is where we you know i talk about the faith stuff is because there is something next guys and whether you believe that or not it's true okay <laughs> i'm just gonna say it that's my beliefs um and i'll stand firm on that but what i will say is this is like god did not create you to just make it through the day he created you for something way bigger he, cre he created you individually for something bigger more purposeful and yes you need to work and yes your money is important but but you're you lack the energy in life because you're not seeking what's more you're not seeking the purpose of your life which is something way bigger than going to work nine to five and going home and kicking your boots off and giving a half-assed version of the family. That's the bare minimum. And what I mean by that is when we look outside of ourselves, we start to look at what's next after our lives, the legacy mm -hmm. we leave our kids, um, the behaviors our kids will have as adults and the example they'll have on their kids, then we start to have purpose in life and we start to have intention about the things we do and the way we act and the way we think, right? Yeah. And this is what leadership is. Like I said, whether you are a foreman, you own a business or your labor, if you're a man, you are appointed as a leader, right? right? Unless you'll never have kids, never be married. But for the most part, like most of you guys are married at least or have kids, like you're a leader. Yeah. And so you'll, you, there's the, the reason why you go through life, just making it through and surviving is because there's, there is more for you and you're not tapping into that. See, the passion is a gift right. from God. Yeah, passion is sure. from God, and most people lack it because they're just focused on the things that come and go, like money. There's no passion right. in that, right? Yeah, oh. yeah. When 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 we Wait, when you when you ahead. talk about faith, I want I want to bust out on faith a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, if anybody follows like follows me along, they know I love to get to Guatemala. We work with Mission Impact there. Uh, I there's nothing that makes me feel better in my life than hanging out with my friends at Guatemala. We build fuel efficient stoves, help all these people out, right? Do whatever. It, it hit me this last time I was there. They, they, they make those stoves whether or not I'm there, right? Like it, it really honestly, truthfully, like if I was there or not, they're going to make these stoves. Uh, we did, um, what else we do? We helped uh, rebuild like some tin things on some houses and then helped out with a women's group and stuff there. All that shit goes on if I'm not there or not, right? So that actually isn't like my purpose, but it makes me feel good. It makes me feel purpose, right? It makes me feel really well about it. When I went to, I was fortunate enough to go out to LA last year and consult on a, with an actor on, on a gig. And I was able to go to the Santa Monica Pier. I was there and there's this guy, I'd never seen somebody, somebody so enthusiastic about making balloon animals, Eric. And he was like, you know, popping the poodles out and doing giraffes or whatever. Guy was super happy. Balloon animals were like a buck, right? And he was just popping yeah. them out left and right, loving them, taking pictures, doing whatever. I get to go up to the guy and I'm like, I'm like, you're gonna be here a long time at a buck a piece. He's like, oh, I just do this for fun. I own the restaurant right here, right? So he's like, oh, okay, like that's that's what he does. He does this, makes people happy, makes them you know get enjoyment, and it gives him pleasure and gives him enjoyment. And he's like, they, you know. That that's my thing, and it's like, oh, okay, this dude found his purpose. Cool, dude. He wants to make money and wants to be bro. like the best at it at Santa Monica Pier, do whatever. But, you know, 
obviously it's not in there checking his managers and making sure that they're you know being as efficient as possible and people aren't shutting the lights off in the kitchen so he doesn't have to spend an extra 10 cents right on the lights being on yeah like literally that's that's in the bag what's the extra stuff mm -hmm. That's making him feel really, really good. And it's balloon animals, I guess, on CMI. Period. Exactly. It's, right, it's right, what you right. give. Right. It's what you give. And what like let's say you're just a you just dig trenches. Mm -hmm. Like you have to realize that if you put intention behind the things that you do, every time I flush the toilet, I'm thanking you guys. I swear to you that I know that if you guys didn't dig that trench, I'd be taking a bucket outside, digging a six foot hole. And I don't want to do that. And, and you got to realize like you're put no matter where you are, no matter what type of work you're doing, you're giving. And if you, you don't have to change what you do. You have to, you have, sometimes you just have to change why you do it. Yeah. And that's what brings purpose to your life. And what's cool about this, if you are in a leadership position that if you can create a culture of passion and purpose in your team, you guys will get 10 times more work done. You'll make 10 times more money and you'll have energy to go home and love your wife after that. You're going to bring that same energy home. Mm -hmm. Like you got to, you got to look at yourself and be like, what kind of, what kind of attitude am I, am I putting off to people who so, here? Like, I know you can't, I can't see you, but you've probably yeah. had a foreman that was just an absolute dickhead. Right. I know right. I have, what is the team doing? Complaining, right? Yeah. It's, it's painful. But when you have a foreman that comes in and he's empowering guys and he's like, he's got this, he's, he's taking care of you. He's acknowledging yep, you, celebrating he's giving you intention, yep. bro. The whole yeah. team is working 10 times quicker, 10, 10 times better. And it's, everyone's got a good attitude for sure. Game changer, right? You know, the culture. So even sense. simple, it's the whole like difference. Right? Yeah. I mean, you want to be part 100%. of something you want to be part of something that feels like it's purposeful and enjoyable. Like that's, Life's full of, we, we both can agree on this, life's full of so much shit that it doesn't take very much enjoyment for you to be like, damn, this is awesome, right? Like, right. people like, I, we host a get-together every year here at Blacktop Banner at one of the big conferences, and they're like, well, what are you guys going to do? We're like, hang out? And they're like, yeah, but like, what Like what else? I'm like, we're just going to hang out. Like, that's the <laughs> highlight of our, our whole year is just like everybody worked their ass off all summer in the heat and we just want to hang out and like enjoy each other. It doesn't take a whole lot for us to be like, damn, it's right. cool to be part of this community and part of this thing. Um, what I want to ask you about and you're, you're, you're kind of getting to in your point is um, what do people who repeatedly try to find what we're talking about in failing at it, what do they need? Like, how can you do the same thing that you did yesterday, but your mind look at it a different way and continue to look yeah. at it a different way from there on out? You need perspective and you need the right leaders around you. I would say we, we're stuck in our own four walls. So basically we, we only know what we know, Yeah. right? And let's say you're a, a first year apprentice and you go and you hang out with a bunch of it's this is this is funny right so you hang out with a bunch of journeymen that are making fun of you calling you a green you know green and green, green, you know yeah. making you do all the hard work but you never get appreciation you feel like shit, right you go home every day like bummer well normally like i'd say if you were if you thought about it wouldn't you want when you're a journeyman to treat the guy that is in your position like with acknowledgement and respect like, wouldn't you think that's what he needed since you needed it so bad? But no, what happens is that you go and you just do, you repeat the same cycle that you mm -hmm. were taught. And so what we have is we have these repeated cycles, these repeated cultures, this repeated belief that this is how things have to work and you have to earn your way to respect. But what um, what people need is they need they need a perspective change. They need to see, uh, number one, they probably just need a leader to come in and change some shit, first of all. <laughs> Yeah, Second sure. of all, you got, you got to go study like what kindness means. Like look outside your four walls. Like the reason why you may hate your job, hate your life is j just legitimately because you have a, a wrong perspective. Your mindset's not yeah. in the right place. Your, right. Your so go. Absolutely. Your so atmosphere. most of the time it's just influence. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so here's the thing. If you don't like your environment and there's no influence changing it, you need to become that. A lot of men just need to step the fuck up. Yep, and call make people out change. on their shit. Like call other people 100%. out on their shit, dude. When they're being assholes, call them be, assholes and tell them it's uncalled for, right? 
Right. And be and it's in on top of calling someone out, correcting them is becoming the change. So if you would like to be respected, be respectful. Yeah. If you want to be people to be kind to you, be super kind to the yep. people below you. Um, this is what made me run. I was running 30 man crews as a commercial electrician by year three. And it's because I came in and I hated the leadership. I hated, it. I couldn't stand it. And I made it a, a promise to myself that I was going to show up every day early. I was going to talk to my boss and I was going to find a way to convince him to give me a small group of guys that I can lead. And I, I told him if, if, if I can take these five guys and I can do 10 times more work than everyone else. Will you make me a lead? Will you give me a chance of running the crew? And yeah. he's like, yeah, I don't see why not. I see something in you. And so instead of going like, hey, guys, we need to get the fuck to work. And when you yep. get the stuff done, do this, do that. What I did is I started empowering them to make decisions for the team. I started, I was passionate. I was like, I was buying, I was buying them lunch. Yeah. I was taking care of them. These guys got 10 times more done just as, you know, in, in a short amount of time than any crew we finished a whole corner of a building by the time they finished one wall. And mm -hmm. so that's how I got my position as lead. I became the lead, even though I wasn't there. So a lot of us need to step up above the level we're at to number one, get promotions and get raises, but also to make a change in the environment that you hate so much. Yeah. So, so what yeah. we're called to do is men step the fuck up. Well, let's, let's kind of talk about um, what you do with that. Right. Because uh, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, you're doing leadership coaching and, uh, you know, you, you know, coach one of the guys that was in the commercial break, as you mentioned, when we came back and whatnot. Can we talk about your program a little bit and what you do? I'd love to give uh, the listeners some information on that because I'm sure there's guys listening who connect well, who desire what you, we speak about here on this podcast, and what you and I have. Um, let's talk about your program a little bit and what people could look forward to if they get involved with something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So all we ask if you want to be a part of it is that you're open-minded enough to faith. You don't necessarily have to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone is welcome here. I want everyone to know that. Any man is welcome here. And then you're also in a leadership position, whether you're a father or husband. You consider yourself a leader and a man. You can come into this. Now, we focus on four things. The outcome of this program is influence. It's to become more influential to the people around you, to yourself, so that you can make changes like I was just explaining, um, whether it's big or small. And it's it's really about understanding what your purpose is, starting to go towards that so you gain passion you, um, and you start to lead this world in the right direction. Now, we focus on four things in this program. Number one is we fix you first. We look at you, we look at all your, all your character defects and we get rid of them so mm -hmm. you can start moving forward. So all the things I talked about in my past, I had to get rid of those before I could move forward. I had to take ownership of them, accept them, and then I'd say that's no longer part of my life and move forward. So we're going to do that. We're also going to help you identify yourself um, as a man by helping you establish your core values, understand your purpose in life and your mission that you choose to serve. And the next part of the, the next part of this program is based. It's all leadership. It's looking outside mm -hmm. of us. Now that you're no longer the problem, now we can look at our environment, how we can start to form, mold, influence that. So we talk. You know, we teach you how to communicate. We teach you how to create a culture of passion. We teach you how to um, um, uh, create a common purpose within your team, mm -hmm. and, and and really bind you guys together and. and and change your your team from where it is to a team that's going to operate and perform at its very best every single day. And then the third thing that we do is it's about building a legacy. So we're looking at the future here. We're looking at, okay, who do you want to become and what do you want to leave on this earth, right? Rather than money, like what's your message, man? What kind of impact do you want to leave? Um, and what's cool about that is this piece allows you to work on your business instead of in it mm -hmm. um, or as a visionary rather than being the, the guy working. And I know a lot of people, they want that. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is understanding what you want in life, but also starting to train, like create leaders to do those things for you um, so that you can step back and watch your legacy be built. Because if you look at it like this, bro, when you die, if you have no one taking over, I'm sorry, but your legacy stops there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at like dominating the market, stuff like that. Um, and then the fourth thing, this is what separates us from everyone else in the, in the world, is our accountability. 
we take accountability extremely seriously here. This is the way it works is we have weekly assignments that have to be due. We have daily non-negotiables that have to be done every day. If you don't do these things, then we count we count them as burpees and the whole team has to pay for it. Mm. It's an atonement. So if you're not stepping up and doing what you're supposed to in this program, your brothers have to pay for it. Damn. And we're doing anywhere from 10 burpees a week to 120 you. at a time. And Damn what's boys. cool about that is it allows us, it forces greatness, right? Y'all want to be great? Well, we make you do it here. Yeah. And that's really what you'll, you'll, you'll bond with your brother so well here. Like that's the biggest benefit of this is that you're going to connect with guys that are like-minded that want the same thing as you um, better than you've ever bonded with your own brother. What, what is the best single piece of advice you could give somebody, Eric? Like, you know, if they're, if they're saying, if they fit the, the, the category of what we've talked about of people who are in need, men who are in need. What's the best single piece of advice you can give somebody? I would say that your money, your business, your cars, your, you know, your investments, your wife, your kids, they can all be taken from you in an instance. And I know that because I've lost everything three times in my life. But the one thing that can never be taken from you is your character, is your beliefs, is your work ethic, is your discipline. And so if we focus on who you are when everything is going bad mm -hmm. and we build that up, mm -hmm. then you will always be an extraordinary uh, man of character. And that's really what creates success, right? Is if you don't change on good or bad days, you're still the same person, calm, cool, and collected. And what's cool about this is that um, you're, that that's the legacy that is carried on to your kids you right. know, when you look at a leader and you see that, you see those characteristics, this guy doesn't even get stressed out, bro. Yeah. That's what changes people's life. That's what influences people. And that's what persuades people to give you what you need in order to grow your legacy and become a better person. Um, work on that. That's, that's a savage one. You see, like you were talking, I, as soon as you were like, that dude doesn't get stressed out, I'm, it flashes like five or six guys in my life right who i know are like that i'm like dude i w like i would run up saying the world's on fire and they're like yeah it's a little warm you know i was like oh <laughs> shit, dude like <laughs> it's, it's hitting the fan <laughs> where can people find you online uh if they want to follow you and check out some of your content you put out which i highly recommend yeah so facebook instagram and tiktok have the same username it's the real eric rogers no spaces E R I C R O G E R S. Um, yeah, you'll find me. We're we're different on every platform, but we'll we'll give you value daily. That's a fact. That's a cool. fact. Man, I really appreciate you joining us today and sharing your story with us and, and sharing some insight. Uh, it's really easy, dude, for us to talk about how to correctly grade a, a parking lot and how to lay a mat and how to make sure we get the proper compaction ratings and then how to maintain it over its lifetime, all that stuff. It's the intricate stuff like this, right, um, that I think needs more attention from time to time because we can't be out there doing all those things efficiently if this and this isn't functioning efficiently too as well. So I really appreciate 100%. that, my friend. Yeah, and I think I think you've yeah, been thank you for that. No worries. Absolutely, That's brother. For, so for us here on Blacktop Banter, we would really like it if you would pop over to our YouTube channel where you can find this podcast in its full length on video format. Click subscribe there. And uh, give us some likes and whatnot. Get some attention over there. We also have some specific exclusive content that only comes out on that YouTube channel. Some of those shorts and things as well. But as always, you can find this podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. For myself here in the studio and Chris as well, who's on the keyboard over here making sure all the commercials and whatnot are coming through just fine. And for Eric Rogers, my friend, uh, this is Blacktop Banter where we speak asphalt. Peace. We've had our 800 network phone number on the side of our trucks and equipment for a while now. And having branding power over your competition who has a complicated phone number versus 1-800-ASPHALT or 1-800-BLACKTOP makes it easy for people to remember and all the calls go directly to you. Plus, when you join the 800 payment network, you're joining over 300 payment contractors who have generated over $2 billion in combined total sales. 
you can call 1-800-PAVEMENT or you can go to the website 1-800-PAVEMENT.COM and you'll find them. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that I've been using Stencil Plus for years. They have everything I need for line striping jobs from multi-piece stencils, stencils with different thicknesses, stencils for the big box stores, custom stencils, and they have free shipping on all orders within the U.S. Plus, for a limited time, friends of this podcast can save an additional 10% on all orders at Stencil Plus. Just use code BB10. That's BB10, as in blacktop banter, at stencilplus.com. From spray tips, pour pots, street brooms and handles, flagging tape, chalk lines, and more, Liberty Supply is a one-stop shop for all your asphalt tool and equipment supply needs. They've been an invaluable resource for us, and owners Sam and Mike are great guys. They're ready to help you with anything you need. What more could you ask for? Visit their website at libertysupply.biz or call 800-397-9907 and tell them Marvin sent you.